I've caught a lot of snakes, from the most notorious to the completely obscure. But in all of my exploits, one elusive snake has evaded me, the centipede snake. Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and today we're out here in South Mississippi looking for the centipede snake, a really unique fossorial snake that eats centipedes. Let's go. Also referred to as a tantilla, these animals spend their entire lives underground and feed specifically on centipedes. Recently, the conditions have been just right to see one of these animals, so our chances are pretty good. We'll be exploring the pine woods of South Mississippi, a habitat known for being difficult to search, but is filled with rare species. Ooh, ring it. That is a tiny snake. That is a southern, or I guess I said Mississippi ringneck. Very common species. You can see these guys virtually anywhere. And I'd have to imagine they're a little bit less common out here. Still a really great animal to see. He's actually in shed. He's got a little bit of a faded color. Now, unlike the animal that we're looking for, these guys have a very diverse diet. They'll eat worms, they'll eat little bugs. They actually have little tiny rear fangs and it's a little venom that they have that affects worms. It wouldn't be a problem if he bit me. But you got to imagine they're eating really tiny things and they just need something to slow a worm down because a worm could be about as big as this snake. Really cute little guy but not the snake that we're looking for. We're gonna go ahead and put him back and keep looking for more but that is the first snake of the day. A little ringneck snake. A little tiny guy. Stick. Go go. Now, Tantilla are a New World snake species, meaning you're only going to see them in the Americas, North and South America. There's actually a lot of species of Tantilla down in South America, so it really is cool that there's just this whole group of snakes eat centipedes. In fact, there are some that will eat giant centipedes. Centipede snakes in this region can be found under logs after a heavy rainstorm, and in these open areas, they should be quite plentiful, but they're rarely seen by people. Lucky for me, there's plenty of other native snakes to find along that the way. Nice kid. Hey, bud. Ooh, look at that. You're good. He's a little wild. He's not happy with me. This is about the time of year you're going to start seeing king snakes of all kinds coming out and sitting on edges. Whoop! He's grumpy. King snakes can have a pretty varied disposition, and as you can see, his is not very good. A lot of times when I catch these snakes, people even go, oh, you brought that with you, and it's a pet. People say it's a pet, and sometimes you get one where it just doesn't want to be messed with. In fact, if I position my hands in the right spot, he'd probably bite me. But for now, he's just musking on me, rattling his tail, and telling me he doesn't like me. Now, speckle kings, you can see why they're called speckle kings. They have all that yellow speckling. This is a really nice one, too. It's got all those little bands here, and they do get quite a bit bigger than this. This is a snake that's capable of going upwards of five feet in length, on rare occasions, even six feet. But this one, Two and a half feet, I'd say. He's not very big, he's healthy though. And this would be considered an adult speckled king. They mostly eat rodents, but as their name suggests, they will eat other snakes, king snakes, king of snakes. Whenever a snake has king in its name, like king cobra or king brown, king snake, they oftentimes eat other snakes. That's not a rule, it's just why we've named them like that. A Little bit concerning that we're looking for very rare snakes out here and seeing lots and lots of king snakes, something that will eat any other snake. Most people keep them around, around their houses, around their property because they know that they'll eat copperheads, moccasins, racers, all the other snakes. Really great snake, but not what we're looking for. We're gonna go ahead and put him back and keep looking for our target, but that is a very nice yellow speckled king. All right, see you little buddy. Back off the brush. Snakes typically have similar habits to their prey items. Active snakes, like king snakes, have prey like lizards and rodents. But centipede snakes, much like centipedes, prefer to stay in dark, damp tunnels underground. My understanding of these snakes' habits are pretty limited, being as I haven't found one before. But I was determined that we could find one today. Crown! Nice! Hello. That is exactly what we're looking for. That is a tantilla, aka a crown snake, aka centipede snake. This is the little booger that eats centipedes out here. Now this is actually a very uncommon species in this part of the country. If you go to Florida and places like Georgia, some of those more coastal areas, crown snakes, specifically southeastern and Florida crown snakes, become very common. This is about as far west as you're ever going to find a southeastern crown snake. And you can see they're really not something most people would recognize. It's a little brown snake and he's got a little black noggin. He's got, got a band around his neck and then a black head. 
Now his face kind of looks like a worm snake. They're actually more like a worm snake than a ring neck snake. And I can see that like while I'm holding him, he kind of behaves like a worm snake. They do this little thing with their head where they're like, it's just really spazzy and weird. So looking at them, I would assume they're more closely related to worm snakes than ring necks and earth snakes and things like that. He's very smooth. This is a very smooth scaled snake. He's got little strong jaws, but they do not bite people. I mean, I'd be, I'd be impressed if you got one of these guys to bite you. Now they do get a good bit bigger than this. He'd probably get about twice the size, but they are a tiny snake. This would be considered a fully matured adult southeastern crown snake. Now this is actually a fossorial snake species. And what that means is basically they spend their entire life underground. So why would he come up like this? Well, he's got a log that probably just connects to his tunnels. He probably comes to the surface to warm up a little bit because obviously the closer you are to the surface, the warmer it's going to be. So this time of year, these guys are more findable under logs and boards and rocks, pretty much anywhere they can get because they're going to want to warm up a little bit. This is a snake that I have spent a lot of time looking for. This is actually one of the very few genuinely native and findable snakes that I had left to find in this state, which is really cool. Well guys, we really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the time we found the worm snake, another little weird small snake that can be found out here. And we will see you guys next time. All right, time to get this little guy back under his log.